Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are talking about synaptotagmin. So, so far we've had a little bit of a reminder of the trans snare complexes that are formed in axon terminals of neurons, uh, where you anchor um, uh, synaptic vesicles to the uh, presynaptic membrane that is facing the postsynaptic membrane of our postsynaptic cell. Okay, right, so we now want to discuss how we're going to couple an action potential arriving in this uh, presynaptic neur uh, neuron terminal, uh, axon terminal, uh, to uh, the release of the neurotransmitter, basically, and to the fusion of these docked synaptic vesicles with the presynaptic membrane. Okay, so when an action potential arrives in the axon terminal, what will happen is it will depolarize the electrical potential difference across the membrane of the axon terminal uh, membrane. Okay, and um, that is going to activate voltage-gated calcium channels. So let me bring this back up. So what's going to happen is you have, in the membrane of this axon terminal, voltage-gated calcium channels, which are of the N or PQ type. So I'm going to explain to you what that means. So uh, we are talking now about, where should I write this, voltage gated calcium channels, voltage gated calcium channels, calcium channels that are going to be activated by the depolarization of the electric um, core potential difference across the membrane, voltage gated calcium channels, okay, right, now I've said these voltage gated cha calcium channels will be either of the N type or they will be of the PQ type and I now want to tell you what does that actually mean, okay, so, voltage-gated calcium channels consist of a huge number of subunits joined together. Now, the main pore-forming subunit, the subunit that actually has the hole in it, which allows calcium to move through it, is known as the alpha-1 subunit. I'll draw this in turquoise here. Okay, now, when you are building a voltage-gated calcium channel, you always have to have an alpha-1 subunit. If you don't have an alpha-1 subunit, you don't make a functional channel. Um, and there are ten different genes you can ch choose from to code for your alpha-1 subunit, and it will all make slight modifications to it. Not major, but slight modifications. So, you have these ten choices. Now, if you are of the PQ type, what that means is you chose a gene known as CAV2.1 to code for your alpha-1 subunit. If you are of the N type, it means that you chose the gene CAV2.2 to code for your alpha-1 subunit. So basically, what it means to say that these voltage-gated calcium channels in the axon terminal are N or PQ type, it tells you what the alpha-1 subunit of the voltage-gated calcium channel specifically is. And you only use CAV2.1 and CAV2.2 to make your alpha-1 subunits in axon terminals. Okay. Right, you also have a number of accessory subunits which bind on to the alpha-1 subunit. So here we have our gamma subunit of the voltage-gated calcium channel, we have our beta subunit down here, and we also have an alpha-2 delta subunit over here. Okay, so this is the alpha-2 delta subunit. Right, so let me colour those in different colours. So here's the gamma subunit in orange, okay, here's the beta subunit in red, okay, let me just straighten my page back up. Okay, and in pink here, let's have the alpha-2 delta subunit. And the reason the alpha-2 delta subunit is called alpha-2 delta is because it's made up of both the alpha-2 subunit and the delta subunit. So the box represents the alpha-2 subunit. This stick at the bottom, which is implanted into the membrane, is the delta subunit, and they're linked by disulfide bonds. Okay, now, when an action potential happens across, well, occurs across this uh, membrane, what's going to happen is you're going to get depolarization of the electrical potential difference across the membrane. That's going to activate these N-type and PQ-type voltage-gated calcium channels, and they're then going to open. Now, there is a massive great calcium gradient across the cell membrane, basically. Okay, so... Outside of the cell membrane, the calcium concentration is 1.5 millimolar, okay? Whereas inside the um, 
in, in the intracellular compartment, the calcium concentration is 100 nanomolar. So that is a large concentration gradient. I want to show you how large that gradient is by um, showing you also the gradients of sodium and potassium. So the sodium gradient then across this membrane, so this is the calcium here, okay, calcium is this one here. Now, where should I, I'll draw a separate picture down here. So, if we have the cytoplasm here, so this is the cytoplasmic side of this membrane, and we have the extracellular fluid over here, the ECF over here, okay, then we've already said that for calcium, so calcium, the extracellular fluid concentration is 1.5 millimolar, which is going to look pretty pathetic compared to the extracellular sodium concentration. But when we compare it to a cytoplasmic concentration of 100 nanomolar, this is around 10,000, more than 10,000, 15,000 times bigger, okay? So you have a 15,000-fold concentration gradient across this membrane, basically. That's big. Okay, now let's look at the sodium and potassium gradients. So sodium then. Sodium concentration extracellularly is around 145 millimolar, so a lot higher than the calcium concentration extracellularly. But then the cytoplasmic concentration is around 12 millimolar. So if we round this down to 144, that means this gradient is only 12. It's a 12-fold gradient, basically. This one's 12 times smaller than this one, okay? Finally, if we look at potassium, the potassium concentration extracellularly is 4 millimolar, and the potassium concentration intracellularly is around 155 millimolar. Okay, so what's that then? Uh, well, if we round this down to, oh well, wait, uh, 4. So let's, let's round this down to um, 156, well, well actually round it up, sorry, then I think if we divide that by 4, we'll get a perfect answer. 120 would give us 30, so I think this will give us 36, so a 36-fold gradient, basically, uh, favouring movement out of the cytoplasm in this case. Okay, so that was that little demonstration that I've just given you was just to illustrate how massive the concentration gradient of calcium across this membrane is. So, basically, when these calcium channels open, you, there's no question, calcium is going to come in because the calcium concentration inside is so low that the chance of a calcium ion actually hitting here and going through is very low, basically, compared to the chance that calcium ion on the outside will uh, hit the outer, outer aspect of this pore and go through. So you're going to get calcium coming in. Okay, now, the alpha-2 delta subunit here is responsible for positioning these voltage-gated calcium channels so that they are nearby the docked synaptic vesicles so that when these open in response to the depolarization of the electrical potential difference across the membrane, they spray calcium onto the machinery within uh, the vesicle, within the docked synaptic vesicle, basically. Okay, and now this calcium this calcium signal that we've created is going to cause the release of the neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. And we now want to understand how. And this is going to involve the protein synaptotagmin. But we'll continue this discussion in the next video.